Hindenburg Research, the US-based short seller known for its critical reports on corporate malfeasance, made new allegations involving Madhvi Puri Butch, who is the chairperson of the Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI. The latest claims suggest a potential conflict of interest due to Butch's alleged stakes in offshore funds linked to the Adani Group. Now, Hindenburg Research gained prominence for its investigative reports on corporate wrongdoing and financial misconduct. Named after the infamous Hindenburg disaster, the firm made headlines with its January 2023 report accusing the Adani Group of significant financial irregularities, including stock manipulation and accounting fraud. Now, this report precipitated a massive sell-off of Adani Group shares, which saw the conglomerate lose over $100 billion in market value. Now, the recent allegations by Hindenburg claim that SEBI chairperson Madhvi Puri Butch and her husband had undisclosed investments in offshore funds. These funds, according to Hindenburg, were also linked to Vinod Adani, who's the elder brother of the Adani Group's chairman, Gautam Adani. The allegations suggest a possible conflict of interest that could have influenced SEBI's regula regulatory actions or a lack of now, in response, Madhvi Puri Butch and her husband Dhabal Butch have vehemently denied the allegations. They have labelled the claims as baseless and devoid of any truth, asserting that their financial dealings were transparent and subject to scrutiny. They have condemned the allegations as an attempt by Hindenburg Research to engage in character assassination rather than addressing the substantive issues of the case. These allegations have broader implications for both SEBI and the ongoing Adani saga. If proven true, the claims could undermine confidence in SEBI's impartiality and regulatory effectiveness, raising questions about the integrity of its investigations. For the Adani Group, which has been vigorously defending itself against accu accusations of stock manipulation, this new dimension of controversy could further complicate it, its public image and regulatory challenges. The opposition and various stakeholders are closely watching the situation. Critics of the Adani Group are calling for an independent probe into the new allegations against SEBI's chief to ensure transparency. Meanwhile, supporters of SEBI argue that these claims could be an attempt to distract from the core issues of the investigation into the Adani Group. The legal and political fallout from these allegations could shape the future of corporate regulation in India and impact high-profile corporate investigations. Now, as the investigation unfolds, the focus will likely remain on determining the veracity of Hindenburg's claims and the potential implications for SEBI's actions. The situation underscores the complex interplay between corporate power, regulatory oversight and market dynamics, illustrating the challenges of ensuring accountability and transparency in high-stakes financial environments. The latest developments in the Hindenburg Adani case introduce new allegations that could significantly impact the ongoing investigation and the credibility of key regulatory institutions in India. All right, for more on this, so we are now being joined by Mark Faber, who is a Swiss investor. He's based out of Thailand. Thank you so much for making time for us. He's also the publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom. Thank you for joining us on Beyond World as One, sir. Uh, do, you, do these allegations compromise the credibility of SEBI? Should the SEBI chief resign after these allegations? They're serious ones. Well, we have to make the assumption that what Hindenburg has been publishing about uh, the case, namely that it's not transparent because some people associated with SEBI have a conflict of interest, we have to assume that these allegations are true. If they are true, then the people involved have to resign. There's no question about this. But I'd like to make uh, the following observation. This regulatory environment, SEBI, and before that, the SEC in the US, which was formed in the 1920s, they were essentially formed so-called to protect the interest of small investors. <laughs> but actually, they protect the interest of big business groups and of the investment banks and of brokers, and they're not interested in small investors at all. But it's presented to the public 
as if they had the interest of the small investors in mind. But as I said, I think this case, and I looked uh, briefly at it because I'm an international investor and uh, a global macro economist. I obviously don't have time to read all the details of the case and also to have analysts that verify the authenticity of the report by Hindenburg. But let's assume that it's correct. Then, of course, <laughs> the members of the of SEBI that uh, uh, essentially violated uh, securities laws, they would have to be taken into account. And the first step would have to be that they resign. Mr. Weber, how do you reckon the markets will respond as an investor like you, like yourself? How do you feel the markets are going to respond to Hindenburg's allegations? And what's in store when markets open tomorrow morning? Well, I don't think that this determines uh, the level of stock prices. Having said that, I just wrote three reports recently that uh, asset markets have reached a turning point and that asset markets uh, from here on will be disappointing for investors. That uh, essentially the, the factors that should be favorable for stocks, they're no longer with us. Uh, in particular, uh, the interest rate movements, in particular inflation and corporate profits. And in for let's put it this way, for most people in this world, economic conditions are recessionary for most people. Mm -hmm. Now, statistically, the governments will still show some economic growth. But you have to understand, in a monetary inflation, mm -hmm. everything gets distorted and you show nominal growth. But in real terms, inflation adjusted, the economy contracts. Uh, I'll give you an example. <laughs> so, say your wage goes up by 10%, but your cost of living go up by 12% or 15%. In nominal terms, you're wealthier. That's the illusion of wealth. But in reality, because the inflation exceeds your income gains, your standard of living is going down. And this is what is happening for, say, 80 to 90% of the global population. I hear you. Uh, the rich people, including myself, I mean, as an investor, I like money printing. Stocks go up under money printing. I hear you, Mr. Weber. I just want to also get your thoughts on this. Do you feel there are indications that Hindenburg's reports might unveil more high-profile figures and scandals? How do you anticipate this saga will unfold? Well, I have looked at the Adani group of companies. In my opinion, there's something fishy in the accounting of the group. So <clears throat> in this case, I kind of I agree with the Hindenburg people. All right, sir. We'll uh, let you go for now. Of course, uh, Monday morning will be one to watch out for. And these are serious allegations. What implications they will finally have. This is something which we are all waiting to watch and see. That was Mark Faber, Swiss investor based in Thailand, joining us. Thank you so much for making time and joining us and sharing all your insights. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.